Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna take a look in on blue. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skim off the top here and get any uh, items that are not finished. And then we're going to kind of look through here and fluff it up and make sure that everything is staying oxygenated. I'm kind of at that transition of seasons right now between uh, winter and spring. So, you know, about every week we have a few days of very warm t-shirt weather. And then as in right now, I've got six inches of snow. So I am starting to see fluctuation in my moisture. So I definitely want to keep an eye on it. So first things first, let's get rid of this top layer that is clearly not done. So we'll sift it and then put the leftovers at the end of the bin to be recycled. So the items in this part of the bin have been there for about three to six months. So you can see there's little bits of wood. There's actually even a couple of worms. And look, the blue worms are awake. Oops. Okay, he's awake wherever he went. There he is. But the w blue worms are starting to wake up and functioning now, now that it is getting to be, you know, probably like 68 degrees Fahrenheit in the wormery. So anything that goes through the screen gets to stay. Anything else goes to the far end. And I'm just gonna, you know, this is how I more or less harvest this. I don't do a mass harvest on blue. I just grab up whatever is on the top and extract the stuff that uh, is usable and then take the things like old shells, mulch, you know, anything that is not ready. It also gives me an opportunity to look for stickers or other things that ended up in the compost that I don't want in my finished product. And of course it goes through the screen a lot easier if it's dry. So that's why I only grab the top. A little bit of worms in there, but not much. And that way I can take the clumps like this and break them up and give them an opportunity to go through the screen. So we're getting to the part where it's a little too wet. So this will be the last one. That's probably about a two year old pumpkin stem right there. Breaking up the clumps, six it put it at the other end. And you can see I didn't get a lot, but that's fine. That's going to go into my bin where I'm going to be sifting through a smaller screen to extract all the cocoons. So I'm just going to right here, I'm going to go through and look at the moisture. Still have quite a few worms in through here, but they're slowly getting less. I did have one of my viewers give me a good idea that I could put some worm chow on the top and maybe get them moving a little faster. Um, so I think, you know, that's, that's one of the possibilities I could do that is um, now that I've sifted a little bit, then I could get some of my worm chow, put it up at the top, get them to pull up a little bit, and that might, that might help the process here. Uh, avocados I'm losing hope maybe except for this one I'm not sure what the ground temperature needs to be for avocados for them to want to grow um, you know and this is just this is just straight up therapy here getting your hands in the dirt when there's snow on the ground and you can't do anything garden wise except for play in the basement um, I don't know. I think it helps me keep sane in the winter. So I'm going to move all that over 
And so that's what I'm doing with the wedge system here. I'm extracting what I can off the top when it's dry. And then I am moving everything over that is in process. And then when I do the screening, anything that doesn't make the cut goes back to the beginning. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. You do not get to be siftings, you get to go uh, back to the beginning and get worked on again. I thought I saw something that was plasticky looking. All right, and then nice sticker there to get, get out of the bin. Another sticker. And then just piling it up over here. And I thought I saw a peanut shell. I was gonna say it, it takes a couple years for peanut shells. All right, so we'll put the avocados back and maybe, maybe we'll get some, maybe not, I don't know. We'll see, and you guys will see with me. All right, now I'm gonna remove their blankie and then we're gonna take a look at the business end of the bin. Okay, you can see where I've been piling things up here at the end. They're dry and they're not done, so we will get to them in a minute. So we're gonna keep fluffing here and see what we've got. You can see the concentration of worms here is, is more than it was when we were looking at the part a moment ago. You can also see there's larger chunks of things. I think this might be a corn cob. It's, you know, so close to being finished, it's turned completely dark. And yeah, let's see if I can break one open. Yep, look at that. Worms. Okay, then we're gonna move this stuff down as well. Cece has cleaned out her refrigerator again. So we have more than enough food here to uh, do a good size feeding. All right, and I'm just kind of slowly going through things here. I'm not, I didn't look at the video, so I'm not sure exactly where we fed, but I am seeing like a, a pineapple or a corn leaf here. So I'm going a little slower. See what we've got here. Moisture's a lot better at this end. Uh, something more that you would like to see worms living at. That end down there is meant to be drying out uh, slowly, not only for the purpose of harvesting, but also as a incentive for the worms to uh, get out. I remember getting them a good feeding last time because I think we left it for almost a month without feeding. So let's, let's see what we've got left. Okay, I'm not seeing exactly a worm ball, but I do see some pineapple here. I believe that's the pineapple, and they're still working on it. Let's see what else we've got here. A stick. Uh, I leave some of these, you know, some people are like, why do you put sticks in here if it takes years for it to go away? For me, it's kind of like a, a fungal sink so that the worms, you know, so that even though I'm putting new bedding in from time to time, the, the larger objects will keep the good bacteria and fungus that's in the bin active. And then when that new bedding and the new moisture shows up, then voila, it doesn't have to start from scratch. So really good moisture. Still haven't found any food with the exception of that pineapple. So we'll keep moving things over. I'm not sure, other than stick, what that is. So yeah, keep going here. 
so I can do a lot of things in a bin that is this big that people in smaller bins cannot do. I can feed, you know, a lot more, you know, forbidden foods because the worms have more than enough area to get away from it. You know, it's, I saw somebody on one of the Facebook forums say they thought the pH of their bin was two. According to the books that I've read, some species of worms can live down to a pH of two or three, but I don't think those are normal compost worms. Um, those are specialized worms that live uh, in areas that have soils that are that way. So I uh, am going to take some of this and we are going to check and see what the pH is. The last time I checked, uh, we did have a pH of six and a half. And that was in one of my other bins that wasn't blue. So we'll get some samples here of the finished compost and see what blue's pH is. Because you can tell this is a really good moisture. That is a screw. What the heck? Weird. All right. So still moving the stuff down. And we have got to be getting close to where the food was. Plant label. Okay. I'm gonna do a flip here. There we go. Now we got a worm ball. I'll have to look and see. I think it's the potatoes. But that's a good size worm ball. There's probably a pound of worms in there. And they're all nice and wiggly, which I think means that they're enjoying the warmer weather. But it still looks like pineapple to me. Pineapple leaves. Looks like there's a little potato there. Nothing smells, and that's one of the things that if you check on your worms every single week or a couple times a week, the smells from the rotten food will hit you right in the face. If you let the worms, you know, finish the food, like nothing's worse than potatoes that are rotten. Um, I don't have a cold right now, and I can't smell this potato. It's because the worms and the bacteria have taken care of it. Good worms. So there's no, no smell going on there. So just picking up all the larger stuff and moving it. Any of the leftover food. Oh wow, there's another one. <laughs> Check that out. That's so we probably and the blue worms you can see are nice and wiggly again. So just that few few degrees Fahrenheit you know, from 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 68 degrees Fahrenheit has made all the difference you know, to the worms and, and how happy they are. So, or active, I suppose, happies. You know, me making them a little too human, but they are certainly more active and more uh, likely to eat my food at a warmer temperature than they would be in the colder temperatures. Oop, that's like a solid mass of ball ball of worms. And that's what we like to see, right? Good worms. Okay, we'll keep moving things over. And is there any more worm ball to be had down here? I think this stuff right here was last time's siftings right here. So they might not have any delicious food on them because they're just, you know, siftings. So they might not have been, you know, the worms might not have said, hey, this is a good place to be. But we're gonna take the siftings from this time that we did just now, and we're gonna put them on the bottom, and then we're gonna put the old food down, and we're gonna put the new food on top of it. So let me get everything arranged here so that we can make sure we don't have any super dry stuff. Pull out my stickers. There, see that's all very super dry. And I know some people have commented, they're like, man, your bins are like super dry. Um, I don't always see it when I'm in here working on the bin as being 
you know, that dry. But if I do, when I'm editing the video, I will come down here and uh, add more water. Um, and that's what I've done in the past. So it may not seem like it, but I, I do, I do a double check on things. So let's get them from some food. All right. So it looks like we've got, I don't know if these are oranges or grapefruits. Ah, should have brought my knife. Well, we'll see what they can do. I just hate leaving them like that. Hold on, let me get a knife. Could have swore I had a knife down here. So we're just gonna use some snippers. Get that opened up. This one's not gonna need much help. Some celery. Plums, I think. Yeah, some plums. Now also, this is a really huge feeding. Kiwi. Um, there's probably 10 or 15 pounds of worms in this bin. Uh, most people don't have bins that have that many worms. So it's important to remember that I have a very big bin and a lot of worms. So, you know, don't feed your bin with, you know, two or three pounds of worms, two pounds of food. Um, it's just not a good idea. All right, one more orange. Okay. So we'll take some of this dry stuff here, some of the leftover food, cover up that a little bit. We got that kiwi. Okay, let me get them some bedding. Okay, this is my prepared bedding. It's been resting for about a month now. It's uh, Amazon boxes, junk mail, coconut coir, and uh, it's got some grit in there. With blue, I will put leaves in here on occasion, but I didn't bring any in, so uh, we're using paper today to cover up that particularly nasty feeding. So in addition to it being uh, better weather for the worms to consume food, it's all tur also turning into gnat season. So definitely gonna do what I can to make sure this food is covered up and not get any gnats in here. Okay, so that was probably two to three pounds of food and probably two gallons of bedding. I'll put the metric uh, conversions up there for you guys. Uh, according to my statistics, 20% of people are in the UK and Canada and they probably use uh, metric system. If you have ever wondered, how big is Blue? Well, let me measure him for you. He is, if I can get things to hold still, 64 inches long. That is five foot four. So he's only an inch shorter than me. And then the width is 22 inches. And then the depth of the bin is right at one foot. I'll put the uh, metric conversions in there for you. So speaking of gnat season, I have started making my little gnat traps here. And I don't know if you can see in there, but there's probably 10 or 15. And this is my classic, you know, you cut the top off the bottle, you put it in here, the gnats crawl in and they can't crawl back out because they can't fly straight up. They have to go diagonal. And then an even simpler version of the gnat trap is simply a mason jar with vinegar in it, the end. Nothing else, just apple cider vinegar, mason jar. I think I've got more in this one. Anyway, there's probably 20 or 30 dead uh, gnats in there. So I keep one in each room because it is turning into gnat season, of course. And uh, looking at when I moved Blue's stuff around, absolutely seems to be working. Okay, so as I said, if you like Blue, put the comments below. He has his own playlist, so you can go and watch all kinds of Blue videos if you want to. If you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring the bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.